Good morning, people of God. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're glad that you're here. We welcome you back to this space, this sacred space. We welcome you back to share in the word of God and to flow in the Holy Spirit of God for this Rima message today. This message is a little tough to give. And again, I have been crying for hours. I feel like this is going to be for a minute that God's going to do this until he gets in the message he wants to get through to his people in regards to his heart. So I ask right now, I'm going to go in prayer. Father, Holy Spirit, Father, Adonai, we ask that you just go into the hearts of men, Father. Speak to their hearts clearly and succinctly, Father. Give them the revelation of the truth that you've deposited into me so that you can speak to them clearly. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Okay, so this is a lot to unpack. This literally was dropped this morning, so I wasn't even prepared. I'm wearing my sun shirt. Um, even was not ready for this, but this is what's on the Father's heart today. So this is in reference to marriages. Marriages can be an idol. Um, I'm going to be, I'm very brief. I'm very succinct. I get to the point. Um, that's just who I am. So let's get right to it. So marriages can be an idol. Um, these are again, is a part of some of the idols that are in men's hearts that God wants to get rid of. He wants there to be no barrier in between. Um, he's showing me the consummation of the wedding. If there is a barrier, there can never be seed in the earth realm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So with the barrier being there, the marriage is not fully consummated. Yes, there's an act that takes place, but there's a layer or a film on the man's heart oh god's heart is the way he's showing it to me i have to say it the way he says it so it's a barrier and god wants to get rid of these barriers so that the seed that he wants to produce in the earth realm can be mighty and great in the way that he has designed for it to be so i'm going to start with um there's a meme out there i'll go ahead and i'll post it down here below forgive me starting to itch his Holy Spirit. Um, it's a picture of a little girl and um, she has a tiny teddy bear about this big behind her back and Jesus is in front of her and he's holding this big teddy bear. He's, um, he's holding his hand out but behind his back is this huge teddy bear. It's literally um, almost the size of her and he's saying, do you trust me? And she's saying, no, I don't. I love this, which is, he's saying, which are these idols in men's hearts that have to come down? These are altars that have been built that God is not happy with. They have to come down for the next move of God. They have to be eliminated. He's going to deal heavily with you in dreams and in waking life in reference to these idols and altars that men have built in their hearts. I highly encourage you to watch the first video, which is Idols in the Heart 1, um, Idols in Men's Heart 1. This is Idols in Men's Hearts 2. So I'm going to start with the scriptures, and this is going to flow just unusual because this is the way it was given to me this morning too. Excuse me. Um, my ears are changed. That's good. It was just given to me in an unusual way today too. So um, forgive me, I will be looking at my notes too, so. It starts with Exodus 20, 3 through 5. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou, and then Exodus 5, you jump to 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Visiting the inequities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. What we don't understand is that, which was in the first video, anything can be an idol to God, including marriage. 
God has not built up your soul, has not healed you, has not taken you through process, has not redeemed you to then put you in a place where your own altars can cause issues. So he's bringing those altars and idols down. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Anything that you put above him, he's bringing down. And it is a part of these kingdom marriages. And he's seeing it. And the reason why is because God desires us to seek his heart for the best that he has to offer regarding marriage. And we don't like to hear the hard messages. No one does. But we have to actually hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. He's saying and search ourselves and ask the Holy Spirit to search us so that we can align with what God's trying to do. When we enter a relationship, if we're not seeking God's best or his choice for our lives, we're essentially saying to God, I got this. And I know a lot of you are saying, well, I'm waiting. I'm literally waiting on this kingdom marriage. I'm waiting on God. But I want to let you know, no, God's waiting on you to get rid of your idols. Help me, Holy Spirit. He's waiting for you to lay down some things in reference to these. He wants a pure heart and a pure bride and pure marriages to plant the seed in the earth realm, as in heaven, so on earth. So we're going to speak to people that have done this in the past first, too. So please understand God will stand back and let you choose because he will not infringe on your free will. You even have a free will to hold these in your heart, but there are consequences to these things. And however, this is not the father's heart on the matter. Your heart matters tremendously to God. Tremendously, tremendously. This is why before the Holy Spirit comes in, he searches your heart. And I know we all remember that process because we had a lot in our heart and we thought we didn't. The Holy Spirit came in and ripped some stuff out at the root. He's going deeper. And there's a strategic reason for this. And you'll see as we continue. So when he came in and searched your heart before the Holy Spirit entered, this is the cleansing process required for God to dwell within man on earth. There is a level of cleansing before he brings in your God-ordained spouse in kingdom marriage. So I'm going to go over what he's showing me in my vision right now. He keeps reminding me this, and I did forget it in my notes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So if you remember in, um, in the Ark of the Covenant, there were different layers. There was an outer layer a middle layer and then an inner layer and then inside was the ark of the covenant that was the holy of holies and as you progressed you can literally you feel god's presence and not all men were allowed into the holy of holies i know this because i had a church um years ago who actually did a life-size um i think it was brownsville in pensacola they did a life-size um rendition of the Ark of the Covenant. It took up almost the entire basement of the church. And um, I, I know this is strange and I have to interject this here. Um, I know, Pastor, you didn't understand years ago why God had you do that, but he was planting a seed in the earth realm. And I know that you spent thousands of dollars and you had conversations with God. He allowed me to hear him this morning in reference to this. And he's saying, Barukara, I have fulfilled that which I promised to you. And the seed has been planted. And because of your faithfulness, you're seeing the manifestation when you see this video. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So back to what I was saying. With these kingdom marriages, there is a cleansing process required for God to dwell within man on earth, like the Holy of Holies. So there's different outer courts that certain people were allowed in you general people were allowed in the outer courts and around it 
but I'm going to put a picture down in the description box so that you can see that this was holy ground. If you went in and you touched the Ark of the Covenant, you died. Simple, plain. You, you did not have access and authority into those realms. And I know I actually felt the presence of angels even in the rendition that was done in Brownsville. So I just felt like a holy presence and there were curtains that had the cherubim's um, angels on them and something said, I don't enter here lightly. And that is what God is saying about these marriages. With these kingdom marriages, the same is true. God has another level of cleansing before he brings in your God-ordained spouse in the kingdom marriage. I'm going to, he's telling me, um, my notes, he said to give my testimony. So I'm going to give my testimony. I gave a portion in video one, but here is my testimony. Um, the second portion here in video two. Um, I was actually in abusive relationship. And in that relationship, God literally told me to leave and I didn't listen to him. And I saw two angels come and literally like point the way you must leave. And I pleaded for my marriage and I said, no, Lord, I, I don't want to do that. And a year to date, I was back in the same situation. And in that situation, God said, you must leave now or you will die. And I listened this is tough. I listened, but what I heard God say very clearly, because I questioned him tremendously, and I literally was questioning my faith in him. God said, you have made this man an idol, and I will have no idols before myself. He blew my mind. Until then, I didn't even know that was possible. And a lot of you watching this video do not know that's possible. It is possible because God searches the heart and he sees everything. And these kingdom marriages will be rightly done by God. So in a worldly, in a worldly marriage, is different than the kingdom marriage. In a kingdom marriage, that's not acceptable. These things in our hearts and these idols have to come down. People of God, we're being called to a higher standard than the world standard. Straight up, no cap. There's nothing, nothing else I can say about it. In front of the world, Holy Spirit speaks, so. 2 Corinthians 5.17 is a scripture that he gave me to go with this. He said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, a new thing has come. God is literally circumcising our hearts. I'm going to say it the way he tells me to say it. He is peeling back the unclean skin. Unclean foreskin is what he said. We have built up on our hearts so that in intimacy, we can fully, he can fully penetrate our hearts, people of God. And through these marriages, he can act with the heart. He's showing me two hearts, two hearts knitted together in that scripture. A threefold cord will not be easily taken down or destroyed. So these two hearts, Literally, the cords are going to be knitted together, but the outer layers have to come out. So he desires deep intimacy with us, and he is removing anything that hinders that holy connection. He wants me to emphasize that, the holy connection. This is holy ground. And I know a lot of you have already heard that or since speaking to you about that in dreams or things of that nature. He wants nothing in between these kingdom marriages. Since intimacy and holy connection will be a part of these marriages, he's dealing with men's hearts first. Hell fears these marriages and is doing everything in its power to stop them. But I, thy Lord, the God, I, thy Lord, thy God, have gone ahead of you. 
like a rose, peel back the layers of your heart and allow me to do a deeper cleansing work of your hearts. Allow me to show you where you have created idols above me, above my will, above my desires for your heart. Fully surrender your hearts to me and me alone. He gave me Psalm 51, 10 through 19. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Um, he gave me a prayer. I'm going to pray this prayer. Um, literally after dropping these messages on me this morning. And you can bow your heads and pray. I'm going to have to read it. Father, if there's anything in me, in my heart, blocking your Holy Spirit from fully moving in me, remove it. Father, and reveal it to me. If my heart is not in alignment with your heart, Father, align my heart with yours. Break my heart for the things that break your heart. Show me through my eyes. So show, show me through your eyes, sorry. My heart, I surrender my heart completely to you now. Holy Father, to be used as an instrument for your holy glory, as in heaven, so on earth. So in Jesus' name, amen. He said, I'm bringing men's idols down and lifting up my people. But first, I have to remove your idols. Remove the foreskin of your hearts. My love will penetrate your heart in ways you could never imagine. Have I not said in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I am doing this thing swiftly. He also gave me 1 John 4.17 and said, There is no fear in love. 1 John 4.17-19 through 19, Love comes from God. In this way, love has been perfected among us so that we may have confidence on the day of judgment. For in this world, we are just like him. But there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. The one who fears has not been perfected in love. And he, I hear him saying, I'm perfecting your love through these kingdom marriages. And then the last line of scripture, we love because God, he first loved us. Be not afraid for I am with you. Isaiah 41.10, do not fear for I am with you. For I am your God, and I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. He also gave me this prayer. Um, I surrender my heart's idols to you, Jehovah Jireh. I surrender my heart to you. Penetrate me deeply, Holy Father. Penetrate my heart. Invade me with your Holy Spirit. Overtake even the vessels in my heart, the organs of my heart, and overtake me, Holy Spirit. Consume my heart, Holy Father, for you have decreed my heart is holy ground for the habitation of the Holy One of Israel. I release my will over your will now. I surrender it all and leave it at your feet, Holy Father. Amen. Renew a right spirit in me and take this heart of flesh to be used as a vessel of your glory here on earth. For thy will will be done on earth through my heart, Holy Father of eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. He gave me some songs. This is actually a sermon and a song, and it was taken, um, was dropped today. So I'm going to leave those descriptions down here. Absolutely watch the song and the description. He also gave me the scripture on love, which is 1 Corinthians 13, 13. 
If I speak in the tongues of men or angels, but I do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. But if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I have give, if I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but I do not have love, I have gained nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Bear with me one second. And these, I'm skipping down, and now these remain faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And then he said, Incline your ear to hear my people. Let me build the altars in your hearts I desire. An altar of love, I heard him say. For have I not said that I am love? And then he said, it is written, John 14, 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. And you also may be where I am. He wants me to impress upon some things. So in Jewish customs, he showed me this years ago. Couldn't understand, but the dots all connect eventually with God. It's little puzzle pieces he'll drop, and sometimes he'll drop them years ahead. So I watched this video, and in this video, it was talking about Jewish customs. And what happens in Jewish traditional Jewish customs is when a um, bridegroom decides that he wants to marry um, a fiance in our terms, but um, a, 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 a a queen, a lady, he literally asks for the father's hand in marriage first. And then he literally goes and prepares a place for her so that she can come and dwell. So the preparations are in order. They're not married, but they literally are married in what God is saying is they're married in spirit first. And then he goes and prepares, the bridegroom goes off, and he goes and prepares a place for her. And it is written in 1 John 4.13, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, and you also to be where I am. I want to leave a link to Jewish customs here so that you can see it. It's a beautiful custom that they have. Um, and he says this is why it's important um, to... Um, in Jewish custom is because it's important to the father so he says to say you are my holy habitation and he gave me the scripture Zechariah 2 13 the resumption of Zion and the Lord will take possession of Judah and his portion in the holy land and he will once again choose Jerusalem be silent before the Lord all my people for he has roused himself in his holy dwelling. The video that he is highlighting is talking about holy ground. Um, and it, it's a song, it's a beautiful song. He said, not many days hence, will your eyes see this thing? And it is the Lord's doing, excuse me, and it is marvelous in his sight. He also took me to Psalms 118, 22 to 24. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is from the Lord, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. He will rejoice and be glad in it. And he said, Selah. Um, one other key point that he just wants me to note here. Wedding in Hebrew is a, I'm probably going to mess up this, I don't speak Hebrew, is a simmacha, and it means a joyous occasion. And he said, um, worthy are you, O Lord and God, to receive the glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. And this is a joyous occasion. What I'm hearing him saying is, 
worship and celebration it proceeds the wedding procession so people are joyous even before it happens I don't he's dropping wisdom on me now so now is the time people got to worship and praise him for what he has already done in spirit excuse me because it's coming down to earth so he said to give this scripture, Isaiah 55, 8-9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. John 12, 32. And I, when I, God, is lifted up from the earth, I, God, will draw all people unto myself. That's key, he's saying. Um, so... Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. As much as it is a desire of your heart, it is the Father's desire and will. What he means by that is it's a fleshly man desire to want to be married, but these marriages are going to glorify God in a way you could not imagine. And the purposes of these marriages will be to draw all men unto the Father. We will just be the vessels, the mouthpieces, the vessels that will be used in this transaction to accomplish the Father's will on earth. He's saying, accept the invitation to the wedding feast, beloved. It requires a heart RSVP because this is a love fest. So the only acceptable RSVP the Holy Father will take will be your heart being open to him. And a divine vessel for his use here on earth. And I suggest you RSVP with the Holy Spirit. Get in your holy place. And confirm this message for yourself with him and confirm through worship and prayer that this message is for you and allow him to peel back the layers of your heart so that you can receive everything that he wants to deposit in you this is bigger than our human minds can imagine this is a divine orchestrated love dance by the Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And the world is going to see it. It is going to be open on display. For the Father's honor and glory. And it will be a display of His holiness. And the angels are in partnership with this. Men who have not seen things will see these things. And they will be given privilege to see these things. When the angels partner with earth. In these marriages. They will show up on video. Miraculous things will happen. For the honor and the glory of the Father above. It's not about us, it's about His glory. Oh gosh. This is. A joyous occasion and rejoice in it and be glad he says and I leave you with that please let this sit on your heart please let this sit with you and let it rest with you and take it to God in prayer for confirmation I pray 
Excuse me. I pray that the Holy Father rests with you. I pray that he go ahead of you. I pray that your day is amazing and joyous. I pray that you see his fingerprints and his movements in the wind, in the trees, in everything, that he surrounds you with his love and his glory. And I and that you know and your heart knows and sings the new song that God is trying to deposit in you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.